Most people have heard of a data analyst, but have you heard of a marketing data analyst? In this video, we're going to be talking about the big differences between these two job titles and how a marketing data analyst is a new emerging job title that's different and has a lot of demand and could be a better fit for you. So we're going to cover which one is a right fit for you. We're going to cover the differences. And then by the end of this video, you even come away with some cool tips that you can use immediately to build your resume and start to actually track something like this and uh, get the skills you need to start getting jobs and job interviews in this field. So we're going to start by covering five key things that a data analyst does. I'll touch on a quick story to illustrate how they work together. Then we're going to cover five things that a marketing data analyst does. We'll touch a bit more about the job title itself, why it's emerging, and then cover a bit of the story to give you a real world example of how that works as well. So let's get started. Now, a data analyst is something you may have heard of already, so I'll go a bit quicker through this one. But for those who aren't aware, a data analyst is, number one, a detective or sleuth with the data. He or she is usually comfortable in large data sets that their company gives them, and they're okay being in there to try and find the trends and patterns that their company wants them to find. Um, they also tend to use a lot of tools like Excel, Google Sheets, or some type of spreadsheet or data management tool in order to process and transform and use that data. So it's something where you typically expected to use that data. So that was two points already. Let's get to the third point here. Um, third point is they usually aren't just sleuthing around data for the fun of it. They're trying to find patterns or trends or things that the business cares about in order to uh, further their business goals. Um, it can range through a lot of different things, but some of the typical things that you may see include, okay, are we getting more sales? Are there anything that we should watch out for where sales are declining a certain way? Is there maybe more things that we can do to increase traffic or optimize sales or is there a certain store that's not doing well or is there a certain user activity in this app that's leading to more downloads it could be a lot of different things but as you can expect they're using a lot of data and this data set is usually coming from a variety of different sources it's often big data and you know you you're often presented with that through the company itself uh, and then number four is they typically create some type of visualization, graph, report, slide deck, dashboard in order to show this data to someone um, probably at a leadership level um, to actually crystallize what they said into something that's decipherable and digestible by said company's leadership because the company leaders are usually not these mathematicians, they just want a digestible snapshot of, okay, what have you done for me that I'm paying you for that's like useful? So that's why digestible visuals are a big thing. And so the fifth one, and to kind of sum it all up, um, they help companies understand their big data better so that they can piece out trends that can be used to optimize uh, the customer experience in some sh way, shape, or form to further achieve the business goals. I say it broadly like that because you assume it's all about revenue and traffic, but it really is not. It can be so many different things. Um, it could be a music app that's, you know, first and foremost looking to just keep users on the app longer. And may that may be related tangentially to revenue, but it's kind of the revenue thing's kind of uh, a second cousin in a way because that's not the, the the foremost goal. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, just to bring this all together with one example, let's say Paul is a data analyst at Spotify, and he's presented like a lot of big data from you know millions, if not 
hundreds of millions of Spotify users. And through that, let's say his department of that big data is focused on, you know, specifically keeping them on the app longer to listen to more music. He's going to focus on those metrics that kind of contribute to that to see what's working, what's not. And after a lot of hunting and splicing with the data, he finds and puts into a report the discovery uh, that people who download these songs and then uh, sign up for this playlist usually stay on the app twice as long. So that's something he presents to leadership and then he makes a recommendation because he's a good data analyst and he's thinking more qualitatively, not just quantitatively, big mistake that some beginners make, that they should start to promote this playlist more. So that's an example. Let's move on to a marketing data analyst. Now, first off, there's lots of different names for this job title. There's also analytics engineer, digital analyst, there's marketing analyst, marketing data, digital analyst. It's a new and emerging job title in a way. So because of that, the job names are all across the board. Just keep that in mind. I'm calling it a marketing data analyst just for the sake of consistency with this video. So what exactly does this person do? Well, number one, this person also, and we'll start with where it, they align. They also are looking through data, connecting data together for patterns and trends to present qualitative insights and recommendations to leaderships, usually in some form of visualization like a dashboard. So that first point is the same. Second point is where we start to differ. So the second thing is this type of job title does not necessarily need to be really good at SQL programming or Python, which is typically what's needed from a data analyst to be crunching through these big data numbers. And the reason for that is you typically are more on the marketing side. So you're running with, you know, web analytics tools, web tracking tools that are already kind of collecting all that for you. And so you're more so about hooking up that tracking if it's not already hooked up and then connecting the data sources together so that you can already play with the data that's already pre-built or sometimes integrated to visualize in some type of dashboard or visualization. Now, on occasion, you'll def definitely still need a BigQuery. For example, um, if you want to calculate some complex stuff with Google Analytics 4 or visualize something more custom, you'll probably want to pass it through the BigQuery first and then run SQL through it. However, many people, depending on the company and their goals, get away with just connecting Google Analytics 4 directly to a data viz dashboard like Google uh, Looker Studio. So um, the third thing is that you both use data visualization dashboard tools. So this one's a big one. Now, you likely won't have to play with as advanced tool sets uh, like a Tableau or Power BI that you may encounter with a, you know, data analyst. But you may, it just depends. Depends on the sophistication of the job. Um, you're more likely to play with something on the simpler side, like a Google Looker Studio or a comparable dashboarding data viz tool. But at the end of the day, both of these jobs uh, involve essentially bringing multiple data sources into one digestible report for leaders who don't have the time or the technical expertise to really piece through that themselves. The difference with this marketing data analyst is that once again, it's more marketing focused. So a lot of the tool sets and data sources are easier to connect and you don't necessarily need all sorts of programming languages to do a good job. Uh, and then number four, this job will typically involve more analytics setup. So what does that mean? Sometimes it's as simple as installing the tracking code onto a site by inserting it through Google Tag Manager. Uh, that could be something like a Facebook Metapixel for ads or Hotjar to track heat maps and heat map clicks on the site. But sometimes it's much more intensive depending on the specific role at hand that your company wants you to do. And so sometimes they want you to use a existing analytics tool 
It's typically a tag manager tool like Google Tag Manager. Sometimes it's a just more advanced analytics tool like Amplitude in favor of uh, Amplitude over Google Analytics. And these, you know, slightly to moderately more robust tools allow you to set up custom tracking that these out of the box tools where you just install it and then let it collect everything and report on everything for you can't do. So for example, Google Analytics 4 will capture a bunch of basic numbers like web page views, sessions, bounce rate, engagement rate. I think they brought back bounce rate. They removed it for a while, but they brought it back. Yeah. And then, you know, average engagement time, all sorts of these standard base metrics, but it's not going to tell you how many people added something to a car, how many people checked out, how many form submissions were completed. These are all more custom metrics that you really have to set up on your own with a tool like Google Tag Manager. And that's something where you have to do a bit more of, whereas a data analyst may just be presented with a bunch of raw big data to begin with. And so I think the fifth point is that a marketing data analyst has more of a holistic marketing qualitative strategic piece because they're in the digital marketing and internet world. They understand or they should understand at least the goals of the leadership and all these analytics tools and sometimes even how pay-per-click advertising work. And they're able to bring that all together and build a strategy off of that. So you're not as siloed and focused on one piece and always in the data, you're sometimes talking more to leadership about what they want, what their goals are, what their obstacles are to really piece things together. And once again, these roles converge a lot. So, you know, there's probably going to be some debate um, and, you know, feel free to leave a comment and voice your opinion on the difference itself, especially since these job titles are constantly changing. So, you know, don't get mad at me. Don't at me because it wasn't 100% accurate. These are constantly changing job titles. Now, finally, for the example with the marketing data analyst, uh, this is my role. This is a role I have done for uh, about three years. And then before that, I was uh, working more on the performance marketing side at another agency for about five years. And um, I would say one example would be... uh, You're working for an organization who really wants to get more donations to their donation section on their site. So, you know, they have you set up tracking through GTM for various key points in the interaction. Like, you know, if they click to the next page in a multi-step form submission process to, you know, finally submitting that donation to see where the drop off is and to see where people are submitting and how many of them are so they can improve the conversion rate experience. You have to set up all that tracking, bring it together, visualize it, and then let's say they also wanna bring in Google Ads and some SEO. You have to bring in those data sources too, and then visualize them all in a digestible way for leadership. So if you like this video, leave it a like. If you love stuff like this, hit the subscribe button, and then check out my email list below. It's free for exclusive tips and a free guide on if this is the right job title for you. Thanks for watching.